Hi, my name's Chloe. I'm a teacher, and today we're going to talk about how to build students' metacognition with Ed Rollo. So what is metacognition? What we're going to be talking about is how we can get our students thinking about their thinking and how we can get them reflecting on their learning more so that they can improve their learning outcomes. So why is it important to do this? Well, we know that improving student metacognition is going to help them to become more reflective and help them to progress and learn more independently. The most important part I personally believe is that we want students to understand where they've come from, where they're currently at, and where they should be going next. Before we jump in, I'm just going to direct you to the additional resources tab where you'll find access to a Knowledge Bank article where you can find more information about metacognition. You'll also find access to the Adrolo blog where you can find lots of information about pedagogy and best practice in teaching and learning. So for our first example, let's look at how we can get students to self-rate their understanding in order to build those metacognitive skills. So I've just jumped into a chemistry course here. And when your students watch the videos, they'll go through their learning, which you're familiar with. They'll complete their multiple choice questions and review their answers. And then on the last video, they can click this button here to self-rate their understanding. Now, this is on a scale of one to five. So if you're going to do this, I think it's really important to make sure that you have a common understanding as a class. Well, what does a one mean and what does a five mean? For me and my students, a five meant that you were so confident that you could teach somebody else. A one meant that you were so stuck that you needed immediate assistance. So do have that discussion with your learners. They can then go ahead and select the number that best represents what, how they feel that they're understanding the contents. Make sure that you also sell the importance of making sure that students are doing this very honestly because you want to make sure that the data that you're collecting is truly reflective of how your students are feeling. Now what we'll do is we'll jump in and see what this looks like in a student account. Okay, so here I've jumped into a student account. This is a physics one and two course. And you can see that this student here has gone through and they've been filling out their self ratings. You can see that for lesson one, that bar has turned green because they've actually accessed all of the content, meaning they've watched all of the videos and they've completed all the multiple choice questions. However, for the other questions here, you can see they haven't quite accessed all the content, but they've still gone ahead and done that self-rating. I think that when you're doing this, if you're setting specific work, obviously you want to check to make sure that your students are doing that before they self-rate. Otherwise, you'll have a series of self-ratings that don't necessarily truly reflect their understanding. Um, otherwise, you can make sure that your students are completing all of that content, set it up as a routine, and get them to submit that by a specific date. This could be done either in class where you get them to self-rate at a specific time, or you could flip this and get this done as homework and have it as a due date. Okay, so once your students have gone and done their self-ratings in their accounts, you can jump in and have a look at that data on your end. So if you click on class progress for a video series that you're looking at, you'll be able to see your students' self-ratings all in this column here. You can order that rating and see how your students are going. And then these bubbles on the right-hand side will turn green if your students have accessed that content. And again, it shows you how they've gone on those multiple choice questions. So we can see student down here, rated four out of five. You can see they got one of those questions wrong, so that seems pretty fair. Um, whereas this student down here, physical porcupine, has rated themselves zero out of five, which means they haven't actually done their rating, but they have gotten one of those questions wrong. So this is a student worth following up with so that you can make sure that they are consistently reflecting. Be mindful that over time, as your students start to revise, they can go back and revisit those ratings and rate their understanding again. And that's also going to help to build their metacognitive skills. For our second example, we're going to look at how students can consistently reflect on their responses, again, to build those metacognitive skills. So what I've got here is I'm actually in a student account and I'm going to demo the student side of this for you so that you can see how students might go through this process. So firstly, students can jump into video lessons. So I'm going to jump into this one here. And as they are watching that video content, you can see I've got a video starting here. In the note taking space, they can actually write some reflections about their thoughts, uh, questions that they have, and that will get saved in a digital notebook. 
The benefit of that is that you'll also be able to see that from the teacher side of things. So if there's anything that might stand out as a red flag, you can catch those thoughts there. So yeah, I'm just going to write answer, but that would be whatever thoughts they're feeling. Again, we talked about the end, them doing their self-reflections, so we won't go over that, but they can also then, as they're going through the multiple choice questions, they will select an answer, click save and continue, and then they can get some instant feedback. So as part of that process, I would encourage my students to actually use that note-taking space at the bottom. I'm just going to pop some gibberish in there to reflect on the answer that they selected and to explain why the answer was incorrect, if they did get it incorrect in that instance. Let's jump back into the main platform now, because the other way that students can reflect is through the questions. So I'm going to jump into the review questions here. And you'll see that your students have access to all of the questions that they can then click into. For multiple choice, they can go through a very similar process to what they would do in the multiple choice questions of the videos. They do also get a video solution, so very similar content there. The difference though is that at the bottom of a review question, students will be able to flag that they're either confident in their understanding, which means if they did get something incorrect, they've watched the video and they understand where they went wrong, or they can flag to you that they need some more help or they need to do some more study. For a multiple choice style, that's pretty straightforward. But for short answer, you get a little bit more. So here they would have their written response and that will get saved and they will click submit. Once they do that, they're prompted to self-mark. So this is all part of that reflection. They've got a video solution. But most importantly, they've got a checklist where they can check off, okay, have I done these things in my response? And they can use that checklist to mark how they've gone. On the side, you'll see that when I uh, hover over that first dot point, I can also see where in the exemplar response that is demonstrated. So that's really clearly signposted to your students so that they have that visibility in, okay, well, how can I compare my response to this one? And then again, at the end, they can go down and check themselves off as either confident in their understanding, they know where they went wrong, or they need some more help and they might need some assistance in building those responses. So for example three, we're going to look at how we can step back to plan forward. So in the Enrollo platform, in the top right hand corner, you'll find the course materials button where you can download a unit plan. This is what that looks like. And you'll see that it's broken down into all of the syllabus dot points. So here we've got those focus areas, you've got references to the syllabus dot points and some of the key terms that your students will be using. All right, so once you have the syllabus, you can either get your students to download this or perhaps even print copies for your students. And you can get your students to essentially concept map parts of the syllabus that they've already studied. You can see I've got an example here on the left hand side. I've got three different concepts. Underneath, you could get your students to write definitions, and then the arrows represent links between those concepts. But we can take this a step further. So once your students have developed this initial concept map, what I would get them to do is get three different colors of pens. In the first color, they can go back and get them to write down everything that they know about that concept. So everything solely based off memory. They can then go back in a second color and get them to write down any additions that they have from their own notes. So only what they've got from their own sources. Then in their third color, they can go back and they can put some more additions in, but this time they can go back, they can use their resources, they can look at their Enrollo videos, and they can also speak to their peers. So in the end, they should have a very comprehensive overview of all of these concepts that they're going to be assessed on in the syllabus, how they relate to each other, and they've built that knowledge so they have a better understanding of what are the things that they can remember by heart and what are the things that they still need support on. And that's going to help to build their metacognitive skills.